Hi everyone, my name is Keke. In the previous lessons on electrostatics, you've learned how objects can become charged and how charged objects affect each other. We've also used the idea of an electric field around charged objects to explain the behavior of charged objects. We already know that objects that have the same kind of charge will repel each other and that objects with different charges will be attracted to each other. But how will an uncharged object behave when it's brought near to a charged one? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how an electric field affects uncharged objects within the field and draw a diagram to show how to charge an electroscope by induction. Let's start off by looking at some interesting examples of static electricity that you may be familiar with. When a charged plastic ruler is held next to some small pieces of paper, the ruler attracts the pieces of paper which move towards the ruler or stick to it. When a charged PVC rod is held next to a thin stream of water, the rod causes the stream of water to change direction. It's attracted to the rod. Look at this TV screen. Do you see how dusty it is? You might also see that the surfaces of other objects next to the TV are clean and dust free. I know that all the objects were cleaned at the same time. Why do you think the TV is so dusty? The TV screen becomes charged when it is switched on, and this attracts dust particles. In each of these examples, a charged object has an effect on an uncharged object. The charged object attracts the uncharged object. Let's find out how and why this happens. First, we need to charge up the van der Graaff generator. Remember, the metal dome of the machine becomes positively charged when it's turned on. I have suspended a small polystyrene ball on a piece of cotton thread. The polystyrene ball is neutral, it's not charged. Watch carefully as I move it slowly towards the positively charged metal dome of the van der Graaff generator. What do you observe? Can you see that the ball is attracted towards the charged metal dome? The ball started to move towards the metal dome when it entered the electric field created by the positive charges on the dome. But how do we explain this? Let's look at the structure of the atom again to see if we can find some clues. Remember, all matter contains an equal number of positively and negatively charged particles. This is because all atoms have an equal number of positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons. The protons are found in the nucleus of the atom, but the electrons move around the nucleus in different energy levels. Negatively charged electrons can move, they are not fixed in one place. What effect do you think a large positive charge will have on the electrons in a substance? Obviously, electrons will be attracted to a large positive charge. So, as the ball enters the electric field around the positively charged metal dome, some electrons on the polystyrene ball will move to the side closest to the positively charged dome. This side of the ball will therefore become negatively charged. The opposite side of the ball will lose electrons and will therefore become positively charged. This separation of charge on a neutral object is called polarization. As you can see, the two sides of the polystyrene ball have now opposite charges. They have formed what we call a dipole. A dipole is the uneven distribution of charge to give two equal but opposite poles or charges. The negatively charged pole of the ball is attracted to the large positive charge on the metal dome, and so the ball will move towards it. Then the polystyrene ball is moved away from the van der Graaff generator, it moves out of the electric field around the metal dome. The electrons on the ball become evenly distributed again and it behaves normally. In this example, the two sides of the polystyrene ball become oppositely charged due to the presence of positively charged metal dome. Charges on the ball caused in this way are called induced charges and the ball becomes charged by a process called induction. Why don't you use what you have learned to explain why a charged ruler attracts small pieces of paper? You might find it useful to draw a series of diagrams to show what happens. The small pieces of paper are neutral. Electrons are evenly distributed over the whole surface. 
When a negatively charged ruler is brought near to a piece of paper, the electrons on the paper are repelled by the ruler and move as far away as they can from the ruler. The side of the paper closest to the ruler is now positively charged and the other side is negatively charged. The positively charged side of the paper is attracted to the negatively charged ruler. If the force of attraction is strong enough, the paper will move towards the ruler and stick to it. Is this similar to your explanation? I hope so. Next, I would like us to consider the example of water that bends towards a negatively charged PVC rod that we looked at earlier in this lesson. This is a little more complicated than the previous examples that we've looked at, but I'm sure that we can figure it out together. To really understand what is going on, we need to look at the structure of a water molecule. A water molecule consists of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. They are joined together by covalent bonds. This means that electrons are shared between the atoms that are bonded together. In the case of a water molecule, the electrons are not shared equally. The oxygen atoms end up with a greater share of the electrons and the hydrogen atoms have a smaller share. The oxygen atom therefore has a slightly negative charge and the hydrogen atoms have a slightly positive charge. Because there is a difference in charge on different ends of a water molecule, we call it a polar molecule. When a negatively charged PVC rod is brought close to a stream of water, the positively charged hydrogen ends of the water molecules are attracted to the negatively charged rod, and the stream of water bends towards the rod. Now, let's tackle that dusty TV. Dust particles are neutral or uncharged. They are obviously very tiny and float around in the air. In a television, a stream of electrons form the picture you see on the screen. When the electrons hit the screen, the screen becomes negatively charged. This charge induces polarization of charge on the dust particles and the positively charged sides are attracted to the screen. So it's not by chance that TV screens appear to be dust collectors. They really are. Earlier in this series, you learned how to charge an electroscope using a charged object. We charged our electroscope by rubbing it with a negatively charged comb. But an electroscope can also be charged by induction. So let's find out how to do it. First we need a charged object again. I'm going to rub this comb with some nylon to make it negatively charged. Can you predict what will happen when I bring the charged comb near the metal cap of the neutral electroscope? Of course, the leaves of the electroscope move apart. The negatively charged comb repels the negatively charged electrons on the metal cap. The electrons move down into the leaves. The leaves become negatively charged and are repelled by each other. They therefore move apart. Now, if we connect the metal cap of the electroscope to earth with a metal conductor, electrons from the leaves will move away from the electroscope and travel to earth. As the leaves lose the negatively charged electrons, they move back together again. Although the electroscope looks neutral, the overall charge on the electroscope is positive. How can we tell? Well, have a look at what happens when we move the negatively charged comb away from the metal cap. The leaves of the electroscope move apart. This is because the positive charge on the electroscope become evenly distributed when the negatively charged comb is removed. As both leaves are now positively charged, they repel each other and move apart. And there you have it. I have shown you how an electroscope can become positively charged using a negatively charged comb by way of induction. Now for your task for today. Use a series of drawings to show how an electroscope can be negatively charged by induction. One last thought for today. When I charged the electroscope by induction, it was connected to the earth with an electrical conductor. We call this earthing an object. The process of earthing an object has very important applications, and this process can be used to explain some important electrostatic phenomena. Join me in the next lesson when we find out more about this fascinating subject. I'll see you then.